What's the story, Morning Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 6, Episode 18, Melody versus Marceau, Round 5. So this episode starts off where we left off last week, which was at Tiffany's baby reveal party. So we're at the part where the minister is either giving a speech or giving a blessing to the baby. I'm not sure which. And this is when Tisha um, shows up at the baby reveal. So even though she was late, it's still good that she made it um, to show support for Tiffany and her baby. So all I got to say is Tisha was looking to me looking really, really good. Um, the jumpsuit, the denim jumpsuit, the hair, the makeup, I thought she looked absolutely just really adorable. So she greets everybody. She greets Melody. She greets um, Tiffany, obviously the host of the party. She greets Stormy. She greets everybody. Um, Tisha says that she and Stormy are good. They talk on the phone all the time everything is fine between them but she says in front of the group Stormy gives her the cold shoulder she's really quiet so she doesn't understand why so they all sit down they start eating and Tisha is wondering why everybody is so quiet because right before Tisha came in they were all talking about her and Marceau and the Black Expo and how that was such a fiasco so Kimmy says that they were talking about the Black Expo and they wanted to give her some feedback about it and Tisha was like no we're not doing this here I don't want to get any feedback I've gotten enough feedback about the Black Expo I don't want to hear it so Kimmy brings up well she brings Nell into the conversation and Nell says that she felt slighted because after Tisha had promised her and her husband Fletcher that they were going to be a part of the Black Expo panel uh, that never came into fruition they didn't even get an invitation Tisha says that um hey it was online it was on the internet I was inviting everybody but we all know exactly what the deal is Tisha she was expecting like a personal invitation to be a part of the panel her and her husband wanted to be a part of the panel because they felt like they had a lot to offer to the community about black businesses because the Fletchers are a very successful long-lasting um, black business so Tisha's attitude was like really stank you know she was given like a really bad attitude and so Nell called her out for her shape demeanor and Nell said but you weren't like this at the dinner when we all went out to dinner um the other night you weren't given all this attitude and Tisha was like uh yes I was but she wasn't she was not acting like this at that dinner so under the scrutiny of the other women I'm pretty sure Tisha did feel attacked because whether they were attacking her or whether they were trying to call her out for some stuff or they were trying to give her constructive criticism, whatever it was, Tisha felt attacked by everybody. So Kimmy says, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's my fault. Okay. Uh, Cause I'm the one that brought up this whole black expo thing. It, it's my fault. So Tisha tells her, well, you need to stop being so, so messy. She says this to Kimmy. So then Tisha says that she's over it. And um, I kind of agreed with Tiffany because in Tiffany's confessional, she didn't understand why they were talking about the Black Expo at her baby reveal party. She didn't think that this was the time or place for it. And I kind of agree with that. This is a baby reveal. We're here to celebrate the birth of this child. This is not really the time or the place to talk about how horrible the Black Expo went. But you know. We, d we don't know when they're going to have another opportunity to all be together like this. So they got some stuff to take care of. So we see baby A. She does the baby reveal. Um, the baby is beautiful, of course. And then they start talking about Kiki and, you know, Kiki not being there. And Tisha knew that Kiki wasn't going to show up. She said she's always a no call, no show. And so um, someone was actually surprised that Kiki was even invited because of the history between Tiffany and Kiki. But Tiffany was like, yeah, I just invited everybody. So the Black Expo comes up again. Tiffany said says that if everyone um, thought it could have been better, then, you know, they can do their own event and make it 10 times better than the Black Expo. And Tisha's like, exactly. That's what I've been trying to say. So someone had mentioned uh, Tiffany keeping, you know, the front seat warm at the Black Expo because, you know, she also was not part of the panel. And when someone had mentioned that, I guess they were trying to, you know, 
starts to mess between Tiffany and um, Tisha, you know, for Tisha not putting Tiffany and Louie on the panel. Um, but for whatever reason, Tiffany, once again, she doesn't want any spotlight on her and how she really felt about the Black Expo because she brings up Stormy and how Stormy was complaining about Marceau coming after her for the $100. So she brings that up. So then Nell wanted more information about that. So she was asking Stormy. And so exactly what happened? with that whole hundred dollar thing stormy was absolute mom she did not say anything and so Nell was like i'm talking to you are you trying to shade me like the way tisha is shading me like why aren't you responding so um tiffany steps up and she begins to explain the whole situation between marceau and stormy and marceau asking for the hundred dollars at the event and then tisha she just gives up she gets up and she walks away so stormy goes after her brings her back and this made me think that maybe I don't know at first I thought <laughs> at first I thought that Stormy was trying to get in good with um uh Tisha because Stormy and Mel are kind of like on the outs so I thought maybe this was Stormy's way of trying to like get close or try to get real friendly with Tisha when she got up and brought her back and especially when she didn't really want to talk about the whole hundred dollar incident but I was wrong. So Stormy brings uh, Letitia back into the group. And Nell says that Tisha at the dinner, you said that nobody paid. And I guess that's why Nell wanted more information because she had only gotten Letitia and Marceau's side of the story where they had told her and Fletcher that nobody had paid anything at that Black Expo. But now she hears that, you know, Marceau was asking Tiffany for $100 and she paid it. And also, um... I think earlier Kimmy had mentioned to the women also that um, Maurice had also paid. So the question then comes up was whether Tisha and Marceau made money off of the Black Expo or was this whole entire event like completely 100% funded by the Scots and the Scots only and that nobody else contributed anything financially because that's what the Scots kind of want to make you think. So um Marceau kept saying, so Marceau, you know, he was telling everybody that they funded the whole thing out of their own pockets and that they didn't get any type of contribution from anybody else. Tisha doesn't want to talk about it. She says she is done. She says it's none of your business, whether we made money off of this or not, how much was spent on this. It's none of, it's nobody's business. So she wants to get up and leave again, but Stormy has her by the arm and refuses to let her leave. So Stormy tells Tisha, you know, the people have questions about it. You know, you really wanted the support of the community, the support of your friends everybody gave the support and you should be able to answer the questions that people have instead of constantly just you know running away when it gets too uncomfortable for you so then Kimmy suggests what if we had a town hall meeting um to kind of get to the bottom of everything and it's going to be very constructive we're not going to attack anybody um if we have to give any kind of feedback it's going to be constructive criticism and Tisha seems okay with that okay she didn't um she didn't like knock off the idea at all she was like well yeah okay that's a good idea so then start Stormy tells Tisha that her problem was not with Tisha. She tells her, look, I never had an issue with you, Tisha. My issue was always with your husband, Marceau, because I didn't like how he approached me. And at the event... Uh, she says, I thought me and you were good because you even got on Marceau's case on how he approached me about it. You told him that he shouldn't have done that. But then the next time I see you, you got on my case about how I was talking to your husband. And she goes, well, there's no other way to check a man who, you know, is acting like a bitch. That's what she said. And she said it right in front of Tisha. So um, Tisha didn't say anything about this. When Stormy said that, when she goes, well, I had to approach her husband that way because there's no other way to approach a man that's acting like a bitch. Tisha said nothing. She was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so then um, even Nell in her confessional, she was like, if Stormy had said that about my husband, you know, there would have been a problem. But like, I don't know if Tisha didn't hear or she didn't care or what was going on because Tisha had no response. So then Melody brought up um the tea on how the tea that Nell gave her about what um Marceau was saying about what Marceau was saying about her business at the dinner Tisha says you know Marceau he can speak for himself if you have an issue about what he said about your business or whatever Marceau's got a mouth he can speak for himself he can address him directly so then Stormy again says that Marceau is out here acting like a woman and Tisha says well he's not acting like a woman he's just very vocal 
That's what she said in defense of her man. I mean, I don't think she should be defending Marceau anyway, but the way Tish and Marceau, how they want to sell their marriage to us, that, you know, they've got this perfect marriage. And if your marriage is so, you know what? I'm pretty sure the reason why Tisha didn't say nothing when Stormy said that Marceau is acting like a woman, because I think um, Tisha is probably running out of patience with Marceau, especially not so much with the infidelity rumors, but especially with this lawsuit, then being sued for fraud. I think that she's kind of like running out of patience with this man. And that's why she really didn't say nothing when uh, Stormy called him a B-I-T-C-H. So then we move on from there. We have Kimmy and Maurice. They are at the, I think they're building another, uh, either they're renovating their old office space or they're building a new space. I really didn't catch that, but they're in a building and it's being renovated. It's under construction and we get to meet another Scott brother. This one is Micah and uh, Michael looks a lot like Marceau and I just need a family tree. I need them to give me like, we need to do like a special, a love, uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville special where we get to see everybody in the Scott family because it's like every other week a new brother is popping up and I need to see how many brothers who are they what are their names I need to see the whole entire Scott family tree because it's like these brothers just popping up like just like everywhere so uh Maurice's brother Micah he's in charge well it's not just Maurice's brother it's Marceau's it's all of their brothers right so he's the one that's in charge of the renovation of this office space and it's it's very behind like all construction projects and Kimmy said it should have been done last month and it looks like the end is nowhere near in sight so Maurice is trying to tell her you know this is just how it is okay and I'm pretty sure Kimmy knows that this is just how it is when it comes to construction there is going to be major delays so Kimmy tells Marceau Kimmy tells Maurice that Marceau is going around telling people that they did not get paid at all for the Black Expo event and so Maurice says that um He's going to have to have a talk with his brother because Marceau's out here flexing, saying that him and Tisha paid for everything themselves, 100%, and nobody contributed anything. Moving on from there, we have Melody and Nell. They are at Nell's daycare. And so they talk about the baby reveal. Nell said that the event was fine. She liked it. She enjoyed herself. Uh, Melody talked about how good the food was. Then they start talking about business. So at the dinner that um, Tisha it was Tish, the, the dinner that the Scots and the Fletchers were at. Um, Tisha had asked Nell how much of a percentage does Nell own of her and Fletcher's businesses. And Nell said, I owe, I own 50%. We are exactly 50 50 partners in our businesses. Well, come to find out, Tisha, she owns 85% of her and Marceau's businesses or business, whatever you want to call it. So, Melody says the reason why Tisha owns such a huge stake in the business is because when it came to government contracts, the government would make priority business that were owned by women or majority owned by women. And that's the only reason why they put so much of their business under Letitia to get those government contracts. But she really was not like an active partner in the businesses. She just owned the majority share because it was going to help them get these contracts and that she really has no say so and she really has no control over any of these businesses and I totally 100% believe that Letitia really doesn't have a lot of decision making power in the businesses now whether or not they did that for these business contracts I don't know I have no idea um, but I do believe that her being 85% owner is just in face, just in name only. It's just on paper. It's not, she ain't got nothing to do with these businesses. She's not making any major decisions of these businesses. And we saw that with our own eyes when it was so easy for Marceau to kick her out of her office in order for the new business partner to take, o to, to, uh, take over her space in the office. So she had nowhere to work. She had no working station. She had no office of her own because her own husband kicked her 
out to move in the new partner. So right there told you everything that you needed to know about Marceau and Letitia's business. That Letitia is um, owner in name only. She has no power in that business. Marceau runs and controls everything because he runs and controls everything in their marriage. He runs and controls everything in Letitia's life. So why would it be any different in, in business? So, um, okay, so she talks about, you know, Mel talks about why they did that, you know, to get these government contracts. And um, as far as the Black Expo, both Mel and and Nell, both Melody and Nell believe that the Scots do not want to reveal how much money they actually got from the Black Expo because number one, Mel says, Melody says they want to hide it because they didn't get that much. But Nell Fletcher says they want to hide it because they got a lot and they want they don't want anybody to know that. And then Melody talked about how they also were trying to raise money for a family in need to build a home for a family that's in need, but they've only collected about out two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars and it's been um the the this charity or whatever you want to call this i don't know if it's a gofundme or whatever it is it's been open for like two weeks they've only collected about two to three hundred dollars so melody was trying to find it online but then she remembered that the scots have her blocked <laughs> so they have her blocked so she couldn't see anything and so then nell fletcher was like okay if you block them and they blocked you how can you say that you and letitia are trying to repair y'all's friendship when y'all are blocking each other on social media y'all aren't, aren't friends y'all are just frenemies moving on from there kiki um oh and by the way before we leave that scene melody did tell nell fletcher that she's going to be having a meeting with marceau to address the comments that he made at the fletcher scott dinner moving on from there we have kiki she's at home with her husband kiki tells she's trying to sell us the story that she didn't go to the baby reveal because she was so sick and she had to call 911 on uh, the ambulance had to come get her and she didn't know she doesn't know what's wrong with her she's been all, having these ailments and um etc now i don't doubt that she may have some type of medical condition condition that she doesn't know what's going on but I don't think that's the reason why she didn't come to the damn baby reveal I think she didn't come to the baby reveal because she probably thought that um they were going to put her in the hot seat about the Home Depot thing um I think that's why or maybe she just didn't want to feel uh feel ostracized by the group or have people looking at her because of her appearing on crime stoppers walking out of home depot allegedly uh stealing and having her child as her her accomplice so i don't know i think she does have probably some some type of physical problem i just don't think that that's the reason why she didn't go to the baby reveal so she's telling her husband has you know she doesn't understand what's going on with her body the doctors don't have any answers her husband says it's that methadone that you're on i'm pretty sure that's what's making you sick and he wants her to stop taking the methadone and so her and her husband are going back and forth on that and she's like you can't tell me just to stop taking the methadone I need to take the methadone and then her husband says also what led up to your last um physical or medical condition medical event when you had to call 911 you had eaten a whole bunch of Chinese food at 10 o'clock at night so that contributed to you being sick as well and so you know Kiki she thinks that there's something much bigger going on I don't know girl you know just keep talking to the doctors and hopefully you're able to figure that out and then she talks about about, she tells her husband you're constantly berating me you're not even giving me any kind of support and I'm like girl I don't know what to tell you moving on to Melody so Melody this is you know her meet up with Marceau you know her and Marceau facing off at the OK Corral so Mel brings up uh, they sit down, they order their drinks, etc., whatever. So Mel brings up the jabs that he threw at her, um, at her online business, you know, the little snide remarks that he made at the dinner that he went to with the Fletchers. Marceau says he doesn't have a high opinion about the products business. Okay, which is a dumb statement, because most businesses, it doesn't matter what you sell in business, as long as you sell it well, whether you're selling uh, t shirts, mugs, uh, hair, nails, makeup, uh, tires, what, it, um, it, it don't matter. Tools, shaving kits. It doesn't matter what you sell in business. The whole point is, can you make a profit? That's the only thing that matters. So for him, and then also what he said was stupid because most businesses are product businesses. Now the product may not even be tangible, but most businesses are selling some type of a product or service so the majority of businesses I think are like that so I don't understand how he can say well I don't have a lot of a high opinion on the products business then you don't have a high opinion of grocery stores you don't have a high opinion of uh, stores that sell clothes 
stores. Uh, like, what are you talking about, Marceau? He just, Marceau talks out of his butt. He says stupid things just to get a reaction out of people. He doesn't even think about what he says. He just says things to get a reaction. That's one reason why I really didn't want Melody to meet up with Marceau to discuss this. Because when Marceau talked about how, oh, Melody just sells t-shirts and she's not a real businesswoman. He was just saying things to get a reaction out of Melody, because he knew he was going to go back to her. He knew he, he just wanted to get a reaction out of the. He just wants to get a reaction. That's his whole point of saying the dumb things that he says. He doesn't believe ninety percent of the stuff that comes out of his mouth. Marceau knows what business Melody is in. Business says he knows exactly what businesses she's in. He knows exactly her business history. He knows how successful she is. He just says stuff to get a rise out of people. And I kind of feel like Melody fell for the okie doke. So, um. So for him to say, well, I don't have a high regard, you know, with people peddling stuff on the internet. Okay, so do you not have, so you have no respect for your, your wife because she's up there peddling t-shirts and coffee mugs, just like Melody is. Everything that Melody does, your wife is taking notes and copying everything. So... Melody then accuses him of, you know, downplaying what she does. He says, well, I wasn't doing it on purpose. So at some point during this conversation, she starts like, I guess something got in her eye or something got in her lashes because she starts, you know, messing with her eyelashes. And so then Marceau's don't cry, Mel. Here we go. He just wants to get a rise out of her. That's it. So Melody says, I'm not crying over you. Just like Tisha won't be crying over you when she leaves your ass. And so then Marceau says, so you want my kids to grow up in a single parent home? Let me just, I, and I, like I said, Marceau just talks out of his butt. He doesn't mean most of the things that he says. But let me let me just say this. So you're saying, Marceau, that if you and Tisha were separated, your kid's going to be growing up in a single parent home. So you're basically implying that you were going, you're going to leave your wife high and dry with the children. You're not going to have any kind of joint custody. You're not going to help her out financially. You're not going to do any of that. If you were, if you and Letitia were to separate or get a divorce, that Tisha would be a hundred percent on her home, on her own with the children, because what else could you possibly mean when you said, Oh, so you want my kids to grow up in a single parent home, meaning that, you know, Tisha's going to be the single parent raising them and you're going to be completely out of the picture. So that says a lot about you as a father. So, Mel says that Marceau was threatened by her and Letitia's um, proximity to each other or their friendship or whatever it is. He's threatened by that because he doesn't want any of Melody's um, strong, independent womanness to rub off of Tisha because it's going to encourage Tisha, you know, to wake up, smell the coffee and, and leave him just like the way Melody left uh, Martel. And so I'm like, yeah, Melody, I, that's what I've been saying since day one, of course, because Tisha copies everything from Melody. Melody is Tisha's blueprint. And so, yeah, Marceau is threatened by Tisha and Melody hanging out together or being friends. And um, he it, it benefits him to cause strife between these two women, because then you know, his wife is going to stay the hell away from Melody because Marceau knows that Tisha looks up to Melody. And you know, when Tisha grows up, all she wants to be is Melody's copycat. So yeah, I agree. Yeah, Marceau was threatened by all of that. But like I said, I don't think this meeting should ever have taken place because Marceau, when he said whatever he said about Melody's business, he was just, you know, being typical Marceau, just trying to get a rise, just trying to get a scene, um, just trying to, you know, have the more camera time. And he knew that Melody was going to bite. And I'm just upset that Melody, you know, fell into his hands like that. I don't know. And so we're going to have, uh, it's going to be, it's a to be continued and we'll see part two next week. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video, like this content, subscribe to my channel, and I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.